interview today is with Donald Fleming. 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 Okay. And the date is the 28th of September. Thank you, Don, for <laughs> helping me out here. Um, uh, Don served in the Army from November of 1944 until September of 1946. Right. Uh, he started out in the infantry and then was later moved to the communications uh, end of it, and he served in the European theater. Um, John, thanks for coming today. We really appreciate it. You're quite this. welcome. And we're going to start by having you state and spell your full name. Now there's, uh, it's Donald R. Flamang. And of course, I think everybody knows how to spell Don. That's what I go by. And the last name is Flamang, F-L-A-M-M-A-N-G. Okay. And can you tell us where and when you were born? I was born in, uh, on a Newkirk dairy farm in Hastings, Nebraska. Yes, in fact, uh, uh, my uh, ancestors actually came to the United States in 1850. They built the first Catholic church west of the Mississippi at St. Donatus, Iowa in 1850. One was a priest and another was a brother. There was three brothers that came and one went to Michigan. Okay. But that's how far back it goes in here, see. Okay. And, and where did they come from? Came from Luxembourg. That's right. Over there they call it Flamang. Flamang, okay. Right. Okay. And we are familiar with the spelling of it because we have a, a street here, but a lot of people pronounce it Flaming. Yeah, they always but did. But they always get it wrong, don't they? Right. So it's actually Flamang. That's after me. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> so you were born in 1926. Right. And a few years later, what happened? Well, when uh, the crash hit in 1929, well, my father was the manager of the Newkirk Dairy Farm, and, uh, and the crash came in 29. Well, he lost his job in the spring of 1930. So we had to go out and find a place to live. And uh, a fellow came and said that he had this farm out and uh, had a house, and he said if we could fix it up, well, we could live in it. And it was at Trumbull, Nebraska, and we had a 1923 Model T ragtop. And uh, we went out there, and I, my older brother and I, we both jumped out of the car. And, and uh, the only thing that was standing was a house, and there wasn't a window or a door in it. And the uh, windmill was gone. All the rest of the buildings were gone from a tornado. And, but we could hear this little pup barking. So we went over there, we looked all around, my older brother and I, and my dad found them in the well where the pump was, and it was a little pup, and we called him Snippy, and we had him until he died in 1937, Nancy. And, and, and so... Well, then we went to my great-grandfather's homestead. Okay, now tell me about living on, on, on this farm. How did, you, how did you live there? We didn't. We couldn't do it. Dad couldn't afford to buy the windows and doors and okay. stuff. So then we went over, and then my great-grandfather had homesteaded 40 acres. And, uh, uh, and so we went over there, and the house was 12 by 17. That was one room. That was a kitchen and a little spot for a, two bed, for a, a double bed behind the stove, cook stove. And we had a, there was a barn on the place and a windmill and a chicken house. And uh, we and upstairs there wasn't room enough to get the uh, length to get the stairs in, so they uh, uh, we had to crawl up on our hands and knees. My older brother and I we slept upstairs in corn shuck mattresses. We had to pick up the corn clean the soft corn shucks and bring it home, and Mom would put it in a bag. And every fall of the year we had a new mattress. <laughs> And so we lived there then till we moved to the farm in 1937. So you, uh, <coughs> when you were living in this, this house, there were the four of you, your mom and dad? And mom and dad and Bernard was born on, in 30, same age as my wife, 29. Okay. He was born in 29, see. Okay. So and, there were three boys. Yeah, there was three of us boys, and then another son that came later, 
and uh, he was born. Yeah, he was born there, but he. Then we moved to the farm, and then my sister was born. What What was life like in this tiny house? A lot of living. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, you know. At this time, I think back at that, and and uh, uh, and and a person we got along so fine. We we had to carry our own water in, you know, and a, and a on the wash stand, and, and went through dust storms like you can't believe. And uh, they were really something. And uh, uh, but uh, mom was uh, one of the kind of a kind of people that could across the country in a covered wagon. I mean, she knew everything. I mean, it just, it was amazing what she could do. Give and, me an example. Well, my older brother chopped off my little finger. Well, what happened was, Dad was, was uh, sent to Orleans, Nebraska, when they had a big flood there. And he had to work, and he worked for, through the WPA and everything out there to help clean it up. And... Uh, they had built a garage on this property and uh, needed uh, shingles on it, and the old shingles were bad, or they moved the garage in, I can't remember. But anyhow, they liked this hatchet that Dad used. Oh, man, it would just drive you nuts. We wanted to get at that. Well, when he left, he locked up the garage, and, the lo and he had his toolbox in the front of the garage and had it all locked up. But you know, one thing about it, he had the hinges to the window. And we figured out a way to lift that window and got a nail and opened it and took off the hinges. We got the hatchet out of there. <laughs> and we were sitting there and, and we were out there and so we were the old shingles, there were some pieces like that. So Tony held the thing and I would chop it and split it, see. Well then it was his turn to do it and so I held it up there and chopped it and he chopped his finger off right at the end here, right in front of the knuckle. And I ran into the house, and of course, my mother was strict. I think I got a licking every day, just in case. <laughs> but anyhow, first thing she did was clap me back of the head. Wouldn't know what we were doing. And Tony ran off and hid in the chokecherry bushes. And uh, so when we were in there, she first thing she had to do was hold it in coal oil, which is so soothing, it takes away. There's no pain, no nothing. It's just soft and soothing. Now, coal oil is an oil that we use for lamps and everything. It's a derivative of coal. And uh, so she hollered at Tony to bring in that finger, and he brought it in. And then she washed it, and we made her own lye soap. So she washed it with the soap and everything, and took the finger and dried it all nicely and everything. And we had what they call carbolic salve that they'd come around and sold in tins, you know, at the farms. And uh, so she put a little on the end of the finger. And then she had me hold the finger like this. And so I did, and she taped it all around and on there. Well, that happened on a Wednesday, and Dad didn't get home till Saturday night because he was gone all week. And he came home, and it was 10 o'clock, and he says, I think we better take him down to Rosalind and see the doctor. And so we went down there, and the doc all he did was smell my finger. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And he told mom, he says, now he says, I want you to do one thing. He says, I want you to, to uh, uh, smell that finger twice a day. And if it starts to smell, you bring him in. Well, I was there until the tape fell off and the finger's grown back. It was 30 years before I got feeling in the end of that finger. Oh my God. And if I leave the finger and they'll grow, it'll grow like this. It'll uh -huh. spring around. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So those are a little, some, that's just some of the items that's happened in my life. Tell me about the dust bowl. The dust All bowl. right. It always come out of the Southwest. Mom would always know about it. And uh, the, the first thing she did when she'd see it coming, she'd say, okay, get the chickens in the chicken house and the cows in the barn, the milk house, and close her up tight, and then I want you to come out of the house. So we went in there, and then she had this box made, uh, a box full of, rags that were in strips. And then we had to take a table knife because those old windows you could throw a cap through them. And they and we had to take and stuff rags all the way around them and everything. And then she would wet a bath towel and put it over the water bucket and then wet towels for us and we would sit there and over our face. And that uh, it would take sometimes maybe an hour, an hour and a half for a dust storm to blow through. And it would blow through and you look at the people on the other side and it's all your face is all black, but you know that 
the uh, towel. And then we go around and uh, we thought we had all the, the windows and everything cocked good. On the windowsill on there, the, wa the dirt would be so, come in so heavy that it would actually run off onto the floor. So we, and we had to go through all of this stuff that she had, you know, besides covering a water bucket and all that to keep the dirt out of it, so. But, How often would, would Oh, gollies, I think we've had them, well, sometimes twice a year. And then uh, we would, uh, and all during most of the 30s until about 38 or 39, why then they, they tapered off. Because uh, President Roosevelt, when he came in, the first thing he did, one of the first things, was has to start greening of Nebraska. And so we had, they planted 16 acres of trees on every section. And they'd be alternating on sections. So that was the starting of greening of Nebraska. Homestead. To the farm. To the farm. What was? Uh, we had 160 acres, okay. and we farmed with mules first, and then with horses, and uh, then Dad had a government loan of eighteen hundred and seventy-eight dollars, and he and uh, just it, the, the one thing with a dust storm, it would just cut the corn right off, and just nothing that happened. You just couldn't get any anything, and so he. Uh, um, I lost my chain of thought. Went out there. I got a leak in my memory. Uh, uh, <laughs> we were talking about when you moved to the farm. Yeah. And, and your dad had had a loan. Right. Uh -huh. And then so then when we in uh, it was in uh, well October the ninth, nineteen forties, when we moved to Iowa. It was in that August of that year. This man came. His name was Wartsy e. Snow, and he was with the government. And he says, "Well, he says." John, he says, I'm going to have to sell you out because the government wants to close it out. You can't pay for it. So then they had the auction in September and the uh, later, later part of September, and they couldn't get enough out of the horses, all the horses, the machinery, and everything we had. Even my coaster wagon that I had made, they sold for 25 cents on the, on the, on the auction and, and uh, couldn't get enough out of it to pay for the $1,878 loan. Then when they got done, why the government gave Dad five bucks? We had a at that time we had a twenty nine a nineteen twenty nine Buick, uh, big pot belly Buick, and and uh, uh, we had a trailer load of furniture, and uh, the one thing that this uh, Mr. Snow says he says you got to get these this family out of Nebraska, so Dad uh, had some relation that lived near Waterloo, down in, down there. And uh, so then he gave Dad thirty dollars, too, of his own money. And Dad says, "I don't, I can't take that." He says, "I don't know what I'm going to pay." He says, "Did I ask you when you could pay it?" <laughs> so we went on and and we got to Iowa. And uh, it was two years later when we finally Dad got enough money to send back to him to to pay him. Then see, but so that's. What did he do here in Iowa? Well. Uh, we got in there. See, his dad was a carpenter too, along with that. And then he tried to get in deers. He couldn't get into deers. See, and then uh, he uh, got a he got a job with a contractor that was building a house. And then so dad took me along that day, and uh, uh, dad got five dollars a day working there. See, and so. The uh, the contractor says, well, he says, uh, do you want to work? He said to me, and I said, well, yeah, I said. And he says, well, he says, I got a job for you. Well, at that time, they made all the storm windows and the screens on the job. They did, you had to glaze them all and everything. Well, that's where I learned how to glaze windows, put all the screens on, but where? In his chicken house <laughs> with all these dirty chickens. <laughs> I worked all summer on that. And then he... Uh, uh, but the first day when he pulled up, my dad and I were there waiting, and he pulls up in this, it was an old uh, Plymouth coupe, and the seat was taken out, and the uh, trunk lid was off, and he had his scaffold plank in there, and he was sitting on a chair inside. When he opened up the door, the first thing he got out, flew out of there, was a chicken. <laughs> 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 These are funny things that happened, you know. But uh, I, no, that was my first job. I got a dollar a day. You were 14, 15 years 
I was 14 when I got, uh, when I came from, you know, uh, from Nebraska. Yeah, I just turned 14 in July. So. In 1941, Pearl Harbor was bombed. Right. Do you remember hearing about that? Yes, and indeed. What, what happened that day? My mother, I, I don't know if you ever heard of the gamble stores they used to have. They used to be right here in Marlou. And so she went in there and... Uh, Mom wanted a radio. We didn't have one in the house we moved into. It was only a year old, and they did only had three plugs in the house, one in the kitchen, one in the living room, and one in uh, Mom's bedroom, Mom and Dad's bedroom. And, uh, but the lights were pull-chain in the, kit, in the ceiling. There was no bathroom, no, no uh, furnace or anything, and it was only a year old. And we moved in there, and Dad paid $20 a month rent. And uh, so Mom was uptown... Uh, and went in the gamble store there and she wanted a radio real bad. Well, they got the cabinet type radio and they, they uh, let her have it and she paid a dollar, a dollar a week or a dollar or something like that until she got it paid for. But she, we, they were able to bring it home. So we heard that on the radio that day, on that Sunday. And uh, uh, it, it, it was quite a deal. Well, that, that fall I had started the West High. I went through that and I made uh, a cedar chest for mom and a sewing cabinet and all that because I'm, I'm a builder by trade. And uh, we, uh, then when it come around to the first of the year, I couldn't, they couldn't afford to. So I was farmed out on a farm south of Washburn and uh, they paid dad five bucks a week and, and I got a pair of jeans. And I lived there on that farm then all summer. <laughs> That's how it, that went, and then, then when I went into service, I didn't, you know, I, uh, it's just crazy. I mean, but I, I don't regret my anything in my life, nothing. 